Why does sexual reproduction exist, despite being an uneconomical method of reproduction from a breeding standpoint? Mammals, including humans, engage in sexual reproduction where male and female exchange gametes to create new individuals. Sexual reproduction can be found in various organisms, including fish, birds, insects, and plants. Asexual reproduction, on the other hand, is a very efficient method of reproduction, as it reproduces by copying and isolating its own genes, which is clean, fast, and can spread offspring exponentially. According to the theory of evolution, the first primitive creatures born on Earth reproduced asexually. However, most living things on Earth that have survived to this day have evolved in the direction of sexual reproduction, which is less cost-effective. This suggests that sexual reproduction is advantageous for adapting to and surviving environmental changes, which is one of the reasons why it exists. Although this argument seems reasonable, there are also counter-arguments. Many unicellular organisms, including bacteria, still reproduce asexually and have been adapting well for billions of years in the ever-changing environment of the Earth. Moreover, non-bacterial organisms such as earthworms, snails, grass, etc., can reproduce both sexually and asexually, indicating that the presence or absence of sex is not mandatory. Examples like these raise doubts about the need for sex in living things. Therefore, science offers hypotheses to explain why sex exists, which we will explore further. The first hypothesis is that genetic diversity due to sexual reproduction is it claims to have advantages in adapting to environmental changes, this argument is convincing enough to be included in numerous textbooks that is a generally accepted argument. Who was the first to propose a hypothesis explaining the benefits of sexual reproduction? It was August Weismann, a 19th century German evolutionary biologist. One of the evolutionary theories, he said, is that organs that are used frequently develop, denying the use and disuse theory that organs that do not do so degenerate. It has been proven that acquired genetic traits are not passed on to offspring. For example, grass reproduces asexually through vines when it spreads to nearby areas, but the seeds produced by sexual reproduction are carried by the wind and spread far and wide. By increasing genetic diversity, organisms can increase their chances of success in reproduction and survival in unfamiliar areas with environmental changes. Sexual reproduction allows organisms to secure genetic diversity and adapt to changes in their environment. The second hypothesis suggests that sexual reproduction is advantageous in terms of the rate of evolution. This theory was proposed in the early 1930s by theoretical evolutionary biologist Fisher, experimental geneticist Muller, and others. The claim is that sexually reproducing populations can evolve at a much faster rate than asexual populations, as sexual reproduction can produce favorable mutation combinations more easily. For example, hermaphroditic snails will reproduce asexually unless they are threatened by parasites. When threatened, they quickly switch to sexual reproduction to secure genetic diversity and respond to the threat. This ability to rapidly adapt to changing environments through genetic diversity is a significant advantage for sexually reproducing populations. A lack of genetic diversity as seen in factory farming or aquaculture, can make populations vulnerable to infectious diseases, leading to significant costs. Therefore, the theory suggests that sexual reproduction evolved as a way to respond quickly to threats posed by natural enemies and to increase the rate of evolution. He third hypothesis argues that sexual reproduction is advantageous for defense against parasites, as a kind of evolutionary arms race occurs between parasites and host organisms in natural ecosystems. Most parasites are short-lived and reproduce asexually, allowing them to develop new offensive weapons that attack their hosts at high speeds. In response, the host organism evolves sexual reproduction as a way to combat parasite attacks and secure genes with immunity. An experiment on C. elegans conducted by American and Canadian scientists showed that sexually reproducing groups continue to reproduce vigorously for 20 generations, while asexual groups died quickly when exposed to serratia marcescens. These results suggest that sexual reproduction is superior to asexual reproduction in defending against parasites. Looking at human history, Genetic diversity due to sexual reproduction has been shown to be an important factor in surviving pandemics like the Black Death or COVID-19. 
The fourth hypothesis argues that sexual reproduction is advantageous in purifying harmful mutations. In asexual reproduction, harmful mutations accumulate and can eventually lead to degeneration. However, in sexual reproduction, genetic defects are diluted through the exchange of genes between males and females, and offspring with diverse genetic traits are born. Through natural selection, organisms with beneficial traits survive and reproduce, while harmful mutations are suppressed. This hypothesis suggests that sexual reproduction is an effective way to prevent the accumulation of harmful mutations and promote evolution. It is believed that this is the reason why primitive organisms that originally reproduced asexually evolved towards sexual reproduction. Furthermore, it is suggested that the true purpose of sexual reproduction is to purify harmful mutations. In summary, the four hypotheses suggest that sexual reproduction has advantages in adapting to environmental changes, rate of evolution, defense against parasites, and purification of harmful mutations. While the reasons for the existence of sex and the origin of sexual reproduction remain uncertain, it is widely agreed upon that genetic diversity through sexual reproduction is an evolutionary advantage. However, proving these hypotheses is difficult as evolution happens over an extended period and is challenging to observe. Furthermore, these hypotheses may be nothing more than a consequential explanation due to an anthropocentric view of the subject. Despite the uncertainty, one thing that is certain is that diversity is the best survival strategy for adapting to change. The history of mass extinctions on Earth shows that diversity is necessary for survival. Even organisms that reproduce asexually try to adapt to changes through gene exchange. However, sexual reproduction provides an essential aspect of diversity that contributes to the survival and prosperity of life. While the future may bring another mass extinction, and the human race may become extinct, it is diversity that will ultimately provide the best strategy for adapting to change. Therefore, sex is a vital aspect of life that provides diversity, which is essential for survival, prosperity, and thriving. It can be seen as the best gift that provides eternity. Subscribing and liking the video are a great help thanks for watching.